Welcome to Jill Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I've got some pretty positive news stories. So first up, number of Bitcoin wallets with 10,000 plus Bitcoin hits 2020 high, showing whales confidence in a sentiment report. And this is just another type of incident of where we're looking at what's going to happen in the future and we can tell the sentiment is positive. Also, speaking of sentiment, this is kind of negative. Peter Brandt urges the SEC to declare XRP as a security. So Peter went out of his way to tell the SEC, hey, punish XRP. Also, we're seeing that Bitcoin is above 16K and kind of holding there steadily, but going down a little bit. However, there's a reason for that as Bitcoin reaches new highs as central banks hint at more stimulus. And here's a hint. It's going to keep continuing. And on top of last night's YouTube debacle where I did a premiere of the video from yesterday, which it was shut down because YouTube went down for an hour. Fantastic timing. Also, Celsius was also down. We're going to take a look at why that happened. So we'll go over all that. But first, take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is Thursday, November 12th, about 12 p.m. high noon Texas time. And we've got Bitcoin just teetering on that 16K number. It is a fantastic day for Bitcoin holders. 0.7% for 24 hours and almost 14% for the week. That is fantastic. Ethereum sitting pretty at that 450 mark. I like it. Even though it's down 3.5%, still up 13 for the week. Tether's Tether, XRP, wow, 25 cents. Still holding strong to all you XRP holders. Still at a quarter. Good for you. Chainlink, unfortunately, is down. Bad for me. <laughs> I'm a Chainlink holder. And it's down 7%, but 18 and a half for the week at only $12. Bitcoin Cash down just a just a percentage, not too bad. Binance Coin a little bit down. Polkadot still hanging around 430, 440. I'll take it. Litecoin down a little bit. I think it looks like everything's down a little bit, uh, except for, you know, Bitcoin. Hey, not too bad. And uh, let's see, Monero down 5%. Tron, ugh, Tron. Tron's Tron. I, I have nothing against Tron. If you hold Tron, congratulations. Uh, it's done some decent things this year. I don't know. Uh, Tezos down 4%. Jeez, Cosmos down 4%. But Cosmos was on a huge run. It was still up 13% for the week. So uh, I'll still take those gains. Dash. Dash is up majorly. 10%, 20% for the week. So good job, all you Dash holders. I personally don't hold it, but hey, whatever. And then uh, Celsius Network. I have to, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Um, Celsius Network. Some people were asking me in the comment section, which I love to peruse and take a look at. They're like, hey, Rob, why do you keep telling us the dollar cost average? We know Celsius is going to go to the moon, so let's get in now before it takes off. I'm like, whoa, 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 just calm down. This was the same thing that was said in 2017 for every single cryptocurrency and digital asset uh, piece out there. So uh, I will always just say this dollar cost average because look, these are the things that uh, can happen. I, yesterday, it was at $1.96, I think it was. And I was like, hey, it's going to hit $2. I think it's going to hit $2. I'm not for sure, but I think it's going to. And it didn't. And this is why uh, I like the dollar cost average because it takes out the emotional factor and you just are just doing calculations and just every day or every three days or every week or month or whatever it is. You just put in a set amount into a project that you believe in because you have done a lot of research into it and you think, yeah, it's going to go up. I don't know if it's going to go up anytime soon, but I don't want to dump all my money into it because there are going to be days like this. And here it is down 7%. And guess what's going to happen today? I'm going to increase uh, my dollar cost average position because it's down 7% and it's a great time to buy. So that again is why I say it. Now, over time, it's going to be the same question over and over again. Rob, why don't we just dump it all in? Don't you mean? I'm telling you, it's the same thing. It's the same answer every single time. Just wait and relax. It's not my first rodeo. This is what happens. Uh, what else we got? Uniswap, Uniswap down 6%, 30% for, ooh, dang, 13% for Aave. They were doing so good. Uh, ooh, hey, Beta Network, yes, is down 6%. I'm going to have to buy some of that as well. Actually, it's today. I can't remember if today's my day for Theta. I got to look. Anyhow, uh, looks like there's some things down, but all in all, it's a pretty good day uh, as far as uh, if you're into crypto assets. So now I'll just remind everybody that I don't, I don't know what you're going to do, but when there's great days like this, I mean, there's a little bit down, you know, but over the last month or so, we've had a, a tremendous run. So don't forget, if you can, if you have the opportunity, I have the opportunity just to give back. So 
I'm gonna give the two charities today. One I've talked about before, Dog Is My Co-Pilot, it's fantastic. It takes dogs that are in high kill shelter areas like in my hometown of El Paso and Houston, and they fly them over to areas where uh, people actually need dogs that they don't have dogs or cats, whatever else. So uh, I'll donate to that today. And also there's a great website called thelivingblock.com or thegivingblock.com. And uh, as you can see, it's still churning right here because I'm on Brave Browser. But uh, what's great about this is you can find different charities uh, for whatever you want to and you can donate to those charities so i'm going to switch over to uh, chrome because <laughs> chrome actually allows this thing to pop up and yeah here we go so what i'm going to give to you can filter by category which is pretty cool animal welfare available in children community service all those things and uh, there's one that i was turned on to by a friend the ugandan water project donate crypto and what's great about this is that you can you can look up all these projects. Uh, you can go right to their website. Yeah, you can do some background research. Remember, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, charities that a lot of it goes to. In some charities, like ninety percent go to the management fees of just actually taking care of it. Only ten cents. The American Red Cross is one of those examples. Uh, they have a horrible rating. But for the research I've done for Uganda Water Project, it looks great. They actually provide like the basic uh, necessity of living uh, to people who uh, have a real hard time uh, getting just water. So I will definitely donate to them. So let's do that right now. Huh? So what's great is that it takes Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Bitcoin, I mean, all that stuff, right? So I'm going to give uh, Ethereum. And right here, it's, I'm going to put my first name and all this stuff. Oh, great. There's a... You know, if you just scroll down, you can continue anonymously. That's cool. I'll do that. Oh, so, hey, look, it's even got, so I can contribute 0 0.1 or 1 either 10 ETH. Now it goes 0.15, sure. And it's going to say, and then you, you click on pledge, ready to donate 0 0.15 ETH. Gonna, yes, let's go. Thanks for donating. So here's where you send it. So I'm going to copy this and I can get a tax receipt. Now, uh, so I'm going to go to my, my Ether wallet, which is contained in my Brave browser, and I'm going to send. So I'm just going to verify this. So 0xEC86B3. 0xEC. 86B3, okay, that's right. And let's do average, and then 0 0.15, 68 bucks, sure. I'm gonna click next, gas fee, not too bad, 48 cents, that's not uh, pretty good. Confirm, and then away it goes, and that's it. So yeah, great, and then you can also track it right there. Uh, it's gonna come up, transaction confirmed, great. Which you can't see, because it's on the very top right-hand corner. So that's good for that one. And then for dog, is my co that's super simple. Uh, they don't take uh, Bitcoin, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. So yeah, 50 bucks, sure, submit. And then same thing, Dan Digital Asset News, that's me. All right, so that one's done as well. So I will link uh, both of these websites in the description of the video. So uh, let's go into uh, today's top story. So first up, this is pretty interesting because it just shows that, you know, whales are accumulating, but that's not the big thing. The big thing is that Bitcoin is actually in the minds of uh, a lot of huge investors and they're going in that direction. So when I always think to myself, I'm like, what is smart money doing? Well, we have these whales with a ton of money and they're getting into it. What do they know behind the scenes? Like, what are they talking about? So this is just one of those indicators. I'm like, okay, I think I'm in the right place at the right time with the right product. So number of Bitcoin wallets with 10,000 plus Bitcoin hits some serious highs. What's going on here? So analytics agency Santiment has shared data that shows crypto whales are still confident in their digital assets and in Bitcoin in particular. This is something I talk to Alex Masculi a lot about. Alex is the uh, head for institutional investment over at Bquant. I say, hey man, what are people really asking for? Because is it is it just Bitcoin or is it like Ethereum or is it uh, you know XRP or is it Tron or you know what are they asking for? And he's like, look, it's always Bitcoin. They're always talking about Bitcoin because that's what people know. And of course, people will say, well, it's not the fastest, it's not the best, and it's old technology. That is true, but it is battle tested and it's never been hacked, and people know about it. And uh, I think it's going to do well in the short to midterm. Now, long term, in 50 years, I have no idea. I have no idea. I can't remember. I can't even tell you what uh, what's going to happen tomorrow, obviously. So, but I think it's going to do pretty well in, just in the, in the short term. So we will see. Anyhow, wallets that contain 1,000 to 9,900 Bitcoin at the moment are slightly under the all-time high of 2135. And this was this was a tweet that they put out today. And they said, uh, looking for validation that Bitcoin whales are confident in their assets, the number of addresses holding at least 10,000 10, Bitcoin, not $10,000 of Bitcoin, but 10,000 Bitcoin has just matched a 2020 high of 111. Additionally, those with you know a ton of those Bitcoin addresses are now just six below the all-time high of 2135 wallets. So six below the all-time high of 2100 plus wallets is what is going on right now. 
what do you think is going to happen over the next weeks, months, and just just let's just take you know 2021. I mean, look in 2017, if you weren't there, and I talk about this a lot, there was nothing in this space. It was just a bunch of white papers and hopes and dreams and powder. There really wasn't anything else out there. We just you know thought it would actually happen, and that you know institutions weren't getting into it. You didn't hear big names. I mean, hell, I remember when. There was a tweet from Katy Perry where she talked about, look, I have these uh, crypto claws and it was just her nails. And that went, the price went up. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. So when I hear about this, I'm like, well, this only just makes sense, especially with all the institutions that are coming in right now, all the big money players, all the legendary investors, uh, Drunken Miller and Duncan Miller, whatever his name is. And here's another thing. Uh, I messed up his name yesterday. His name is Drunken Miller, not Drunken Miller. Uh, I make a lot of mistakes, so I always try to own up to them, which, which I make a lot of mistakes. That's my wife. But uh, his name is Drunk Druck in Miller. Uh, actually, I remember uh, on one of the BitMEX uh, videos, I called uh, Arthur Hayes Isaac Hayes. Uh, that's, that's, you know, hey, I'm not good with names. So anyhow, this is the types of things that I really like to, to see about what's happening behind the scenes. I think this is good for cryptocurrency digital assets, especially, like I've always said, Going into 2021, I expect to see fireworks. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, this one's funny uh, because Peter Brandt, he he's a he's another one of those legendary guys apparently uh, as far as a trader goes, and uh, he just said, "Hey, SEC, you got to step in and declare XRP as a security." I don't know. Brandt really's got a thing for XRP, and XRP Army just despises this guy. And uh, I just thought it was an interesting article. So trading veteran Peter Brandt claims that XRP, the fourth largest digital asset affiliated with fintech company Ripple, is actually a security. The only reason why it hasn't been declared one yet by the SEC is the agency's failure to understand the crypto industry, according to Brandt. And this is this gets interesting. So ex-CFTC chairman Christopher Giancarlo, who is a part of the Digital Dollar Project right now, uh, was the one who defined Bitcoin and Ethereum as commodities and declare that XRP wasn't a security back in June. So I'm like, oh, that's good. But the next sentence kind of blows it. It says, his words, however, should be taken with a pinch of salt. He now works for a private law firm that provides legal services to Ripple. So whatever. Ripple's main argument against classifying XRP as a security is that the XRP ledger functions independently of Ripple. Owning XRP also doesn't give one stake in the private company. This is what we were talking about yesterday. What there was a couple of, uh, I th there was a group of six Congress uh, men and women who were talking to the OCC, Brian Brooks. They sent him a letter and said, hey, you know, you really have to step away from cryptocurrency because we don't believe it's it's something that you should really be into so much because of the pandemic. And then I just, I pretty much laid it out. I go, this is just them not being educated on the, on the position. And Brian Brooks is a golden opportunity to educate all of them. And then one of the things that we talked about was, you know, companies can come and go, but the ledger will still say, stay. And then Ripple is one of those people that have always said the same thing. Look, if Ripple goes away today, something happens, uh, XRP will continue to go on because it is decentralized. Now, there's a lot of different uh, people that go back and forth on that, but hey, they do have a lot of nodes. And if you think EOS, EOS is decentralized, there are 21 blockchain producers, then you got to kind of consider that XRP also is as well. But there's two things I'm going to bring up. First, the Howey test and how that all also relates to securities. And the second part is in the last sentence here, it says, moreover, in his countless interviews, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse insists that XRP has real utility, which is making cross-border payments more efficient. So I read this great book called The Infinite Machine, and it is all about how uh, Ethereum came to be. And one of the big things that they had as far as like a hurdle was trying to get past uh, the whole process of being called a security. And what their lawyers came up with is they said, hey, you know what? You have to just talk about the gas and the utility because it is not going to be a security if it has a function, a real world use function, such as they're going to invest in gas and that's what they're investing in, not so much as a, of Ethereum. And that's how they got around the whole security question, which is the same thing that XRP is trying to do going, look, it's not that you're investing and then you're just letting it, you know, just uh, go away and, and we do all the work. Really what you're investing for is cross-border payments and what you're going to use later on. It has the utility. So that is the one part. The second part, is the Howey test. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just want to go over it just briefly because we're not lawyers and we're not going to decide the whole outcome, but it is something to be noticed or to be uh, aware of. So there's four parts that will that will state if a crypto is a security. Four, 
Offer involves a monetary investment. Well, that's check for everything. There is an expectation of profits from the investment. All right, you got me on that one. The investment is in a common enterprise. All right. And any profit comes from the efforts of a promoter or third party. And that's where it gets a little hazy. So what they did is they took a look at Giancarlo said, well, I'm going to take a look at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? Is there a monetary investment? Yeah. Expectation of profits. Sure. Investment in a common enterprise. Nah, not really. And then profits from a third party. Because it is decentralized, that means that there is no uh, centralized party that is doing all the work and contributing to the massive amounts of, uh, of increase or ROI. So they said, nope, Bitcoin's not one of them. They took a look at Ethereum. They said, yes, yes, for the profits and uh, investment. And investment in a common enterprise, well, the Ethereum Foundation, sure. Profits from a third party, no, because it's decentralized. And they said, well, since it's, everything's decentralized, you can't say that. Now, this is where it gets good, because EOS, they said, yes, yes, yes. And yes, profits from a third party. Yes, EOS, you are a security. And this is what they did. They smacked them down. And this was in uh, 2018, 2019. And they said, look, you raised $4.1 billion dollars. And what we want you to do is pay $24 million in penalties. That's it. So they said, hey, you know, billionaires, give us $24 million. And they're sure, happily. But there is one thing you have to, be, have to notice is that EOS is not considered a security because they did this and they said, well, when you did your, your ICO, which was a year long, essentially, and you guys didn't have a mainnet and you weren't decentralized, you are gonna owe us some money. But after you launch your mainnet and you have your 21 blockchain producers, now you are decentralized, meaning you are not a security. And then it just went away. That's why you can still invest in the EOS and it's not deemed a security. So so look, you know on this channel, uh, sometimes I've not been a big fan of XRP because of the investment and how it really hasn't uh, produced anything. Not that I'm gonna be ecstatic about that. Why would I be? However, I'm just too stubborn to sell. But I will say this, I will give credit where credit's due. Here's the validator registry. There's a ton of them. Now you will notice down here that there are there are some that are actually in Ripple. Of course, they're going to be a part of that. But there's a lot of other ones out there. So uh, if we talk about like decentralization, sure, you got a lot of validators. If you're going to say that EOS is is decentralized, we're 21, then you got to go give it to XRP. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and let's move on. Next up, Bitcoin reaches new highs as central banks hint at more stimulus. Not really a hint that's going to happen. So what do we got here? So because we have issues with this coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic, and whether if you believe it is real or not, it is still causing havoc on the economy. And Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said in a post-election address last week that further support is likely to be needed. Like, he's not going to come out and say, we're going to print money until the cows come home. <laughs> he's going to say, hey, look, we're going to support you until needed, which is code for let's just turn those money printers on. Fine. Powell will speak again today at 1845 UTC to address the falling bond yields in the U.S. And I've been I've heard a couple of economists already say to get out of stocks and bonds and just put it into dollars, which I thought was weird because Druckenmiller said that he is going to be shorting the dollar because he expects it to go down precipitously. We will see. Anyhow, the employment situation in the U.S. has improved slightly as jobless claims fell to 709,000. And the economy is on a steady, if not uncertain, path to recovery. I don't know where you're at, uh, but I've got a couple of friends who do not have jobs anymore and are really struggling to find uh, new jobs. Now, uh, tell me where you're at and tell me if the economy is recovering where you're at. I'm just curious to see how things are going on globally. Anyhow, the, there's a news from Pfizer and BioNTech that they achieved 90% effectiveness of their COVID vaccine trial, which is great, followed by a Russian's claim of 92% efficiency. Uh, I guess I'm not going to put too much faith in Russian medicine, but maybe I'm wrong. If you're from Russia, tell me how wrong I am. Restored faith in ending the pandemic. However, America and Europe continue to report a record number of COVID-19 cases, and there these require the government's immediate attention. So here's the problem. I just left El Paso, Texas to come to Houston. We had to be here for business, and um, uh, they are really hurting. They're like the cases went from like 500 a day to a 1500. I think now it's like two or three thousand. So it's pretty awful over there. Uh, we already lost our nephew. He passed away from coronavirus, and then uh, one of my friends. Uh, Ernie just passed away today from coronavirus. And uh, Ernie was a guy that when I was a director of nursing, uh, we worked together uh, at this agency and he was a good guy. 
he's uh <laughs> he's a little bit older he's uh in his uh early 60s now well i guess yeah early 60s and uh he just didn't want to go on an event and he passed away today so this is one of those things where it's an awful situation and it's a weird it's a weird virus like a friend of mine mike he just had like a really bad headache and that was it and he you know got got through it no big deal a couple other friends of mine they just didn't have any symptoms and then that was it and then you know my friend ernie just it just didn't make it so i don't know what's going on essentially with that but uh i mean we'll see how it all works out i don't know if this this vaccine really is uh, the greatest thing of all time but i will say this uh, with all this uncertainty uh, our market is going to uh, is going to increase uh, pretty well so we will see anyhow global central bank bosses and financial experts came together for the 2020 edition of the uh, central bank's annual forum that sounds like a real rip roaring good time powell iterated in the past that government spending is essential <laughs> shocker and slow down a monetary stimulus now could hurt the global economy in worse ways in the current recessionary environment. There was a great video that was put on Twitter and it just takes, takes a look at like how much we have already spent in America, I don't know about globally, uh, for these for this stimulus package. And I just wanna show this to you and it's only like 58 seconds long. This is crazy. So check this out. They're gonna compare how much money we spent and how it looks just in scale. So this of course, 100 bucks, Here's 10,000 bucks, not too, uh, here's a million. That looks very nice. Here's a hundred million. All right. And then let's take a look over here. This is 2 trillion quarantine package. This is from 340 billion in supplemental spending, hospitals, VA. That's fine. Hey, sure. 221 billion in business tax benefits. All right. Here's 150 billion uh, for the states, 500 billion for state loans, uh, 349 billion for, I don't know what it is. 300 billion, 250 billion unemployment insurance and some more stuff that is just crazy 400 billion bank bailout when so that's all the stimulus and this is 27 billion which is what the fed prints every day and dumps into the market that's crazy amount of money and when you put it into scale like that you're like holy smokes we spent that much money unbelievable so when we talk about you know is Bitcoin cryptocurrency digital assets a pretty good hedge against what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. So to finish up, uh, there's a risk on environment activated. So what they're talking about here is that there was a bullish rally uh, in the stock markets, which was paused a couple days ago. The S&P dipped 2.6%. I probably think it's gonna go way lower than that as time goes on. And because of this uh, new talk about the vaccine, tech stocks plummeted. Uh, things like uh, Zoom and Netflix and everything else, uh, they plummeted way down. So like, oh, we're not going to use Zoom anymore. We're not going to use Netflix, which is stupid. Of course we are. So uh, people picked it up for cheap and it went up 2%. So good for those guys. This was interesting. Gold, uh, on the other hand, held on to losses and was trimmed down to around 1870, even though it's got, had a high at 1950. So look, I'm not going to uh, poo poo all over gold. I still think you should have uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin in your portfolio. I just think you should have more uh, Bitcoin, or at least for me, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial analyst. And then Bitcoin broke, broke above its yearly high as it tested 16 for the second time, and it's changing hands around 15.9. I think it's going to uh, jump above 16. But I could be wrong. I, maybe it goes on to 15 or 14 or whatever else. That's why I'm always saying dollar cost average. I used to think that in 2017 that Bitcoin was going to go to the moon and it was going to go to a million dollars like John McAfee said, and shyster. And uh, I was dumping a lot of money into it. And then I saw my portfolio dump in 2018 like nobody's business. And that's why I'm a little bit more um, seasoned and grizzled and whatever you want to call it. But uh, I'm just telling you the, the things that I went through and that's why I do and say the things I do. So look, that's what's going on in the in the macro environment. Let me just think of the comment section. Let's move on to the whole thing with Celsius. So if you don't know, yesterday uh, we had this great premiere where I went through a, well, about a five or 10 minute session where I talked about one of the things we talked about was, you know, why my website is 100% for free. And just so you know, uh, the link to the website is in the description below. It's danteachescrypto.com, 100% for free. Very uh, streamlined and easy way to understand crypto and how to buy things and how to do things and all that good stuff. So yesterday we're going to do a premiere. It was going to be great, uh, but YouTube just decided to crash. 
uh, for if you don't realize, uh, yesterday YouTube just went down globally, intermittently throughout the entire world, which is kind of weird. We had to re-upload and it was a little bit crazy. And then as we were going through this, and then we did another uh, premiere later on, there was a message that people kept popping up and saying, hey, Celsius is also down. And I'm like, wow, maybe the world's coming to an end. Because, you know, YouTube's down. That's never down. And then Celsius was down. What the heck's going on? So I had to find out from uh, Alex Mashinsky here, the CEO of Celsius, what happened. He said, hey, just so everybody knows, we updated the Celsius network DNS for a website and app. So it may take up to 24 hours to propagate worldwide. No need to get alarmed. I can tell you from my personal experience, I've done this. I've transferred over different plans i also use godaddy just like alex mashinsky and celsius does which i think is kind of odd they're using uh godaddy i don't know why they'd use godaddy i would think with like a billion dollar company they'd have like their own thing but whatever it doesn't matter so it does take a while and it's kind of hairy i don't know why they didn't send out an email beforehand to let everybody know that this was going to happen i think they should have so people weren't so alarmed but whatever and what he starts to talk about here is, is what he says we were upgrading systems be ready for launch of poc and web app great so there, it's just not going to be uh, exclusively on your phone. Uh, you're able to do things on desktop version. So great. Okay. While making changes to DNS settings, we had to disable two-factor authentication on GoDaddy and found some vulnerabilities. Our options were to risk it and move forward or freeze the account to avoid anyone jumping on the front end and try to hack us. As we did earlier this year, when we proactively changed everyone's passwords, we decided to do the hard thing and lock down the account. This may result in short-term inconvenience for some, but is the right thing for all. Website and app will be back soon. So look, I don't care what you gotta do. Just make sure that you are in charge and you are making sure that nothing gets hacked. Celsius has never been hacked, and I'd like to keep that streak going. So if it's a little bit of a pain in the A for me for like 24 hours, 48, 72, I don't care. Just make sure that you guys are doing the right thing. But again, it is kind of odd, and I'll just throw it up there. I think they should have you know, sent out an email before they even went through this and said, hey, we're going through GoDaddy, we're gonna propagate the DNS, it may take 24 to 48 hours. Would have resolved a lot of things. I don't know if, I would assume they would know. Alex is kind of a smart guy. I'm sure his team would know, but uh, here we are. And as of 12.30 uh, p.m. Texas time, uh, I still can't get into uh, Celsius. So we will see. And uh, that's it. That's what we know. So that's it for today. So I know there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things always going on in crypto. So sometimes it goes a little bit long. If you haven't signed up for Dan Teaches Crypto, there's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And uh, we'll be adding some more videos in uh, pretty soon. Uh, but uh, we try to make it as simplified as humanly possible. There is one video I really want to do. And I want to talk about the pros and cons of dollar cost averaging and uh, trading or with technical analysis. I don't know squat about technical analysis. I just have no idea. So I reached out to uh, Scott Melker, who knows me from nobody. But he's the uh, he goes by the uh, moniker. Uh, the wolf of all streets seems to really do really well in uh ta and investing things like that but he's also talk about just you know dollar cost averaging just being a long-term investor so i reach out to him hopefully he'll uh reach back and we can do a video don't know if not i'll try to get uh john and jerry and market rebellion or maybe uh cj or monty because they those guys are really you know great experts Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. Really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more uh, on the left and right. Don't know what they are. YouTube's does their magic. And uh, so check those out. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.